It's close. It's tight. I think, okay, this could actually be a game. And then balls start flying out of the park. I can't even get mad because my old neighbor, Kyle Schwarber, is the one who's launching them, launching them out of the ballpark. And at some point, once it got to, I don't know, five or six, I just stood up, I turned the TV off, and I set aside a box of Pro V1s because I made that stupid yeah, bet good. yesterday where I said that, the, that the, the Arizonas would win and they, they couldn't get close. Tony, it does feel different except you and I know better. I mean, for people who just get caught up in the hype of the moment, which is 90% of the people who talk about these things, it's gonna, they're going to declare it over. You and I have covered these things. We've seen these things. The venue changes. It goes for three games now to Arizona. It is not as raucous in Arizona as it is in Philly. It just isn't. It's not the home field advantage there that it is in Philly. But I'm not going to just say it's over yet. If it goes 3-0, it's over. So it, it feels bad if you're Arizona. But let's see what happens in game three. It's a 2-3-2. Two, two. They got three games in Arizona if they can win one. Let me just please sit here and say I believe I had that and I'm going to enjoy the golf balls. But don't give me golf balls you've got. Go out and get a new box of Pro V's and imprint on them <laughs> if found return to Michael Wilbon. Oh, no. That's what I want. I don't on want people golf thinking ball. I was that wayward. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> let, me, let me go to this. I, I sat here yesterday and I said to you, the Phillies line up one through eight. They can all hit it out, one through yeah. eight. But if you want to just go one and two, Schwarber and Turner – that's fine. And I don't please, and I know you wouldn't do this, please don't tell me, well, oh, Schwarber bats under 200. So what? That doesn't matter. It is, he's a game wrecker. It is devastating when he hits home runs. Look what it has done to the Arizona pitchers. Presumably their best two starters have now allowed six home runs in fewer than 11 innings. I, I mean, I, I don't really see this changing, but I'll give you the fact that it goes to Arizona. But I'll also tell you this, Mike. Even if they win three in Arizona, yeah. now it they comes still back come to back. Philadelphia. Yeah. Phillies don't lose. They are mm. now 6-0 and this year against National League teams, 5-0 and last year against National League teams, and they've out-homered those teams 35-9. to Tony, I'll Mike. only say this. We've all, you and I have covered series where red-hot teams bashing the ball out of the ballpark get shut it, down it can once, change. and the whole no, thing can change right. with great pitching in October. That's, right. that's why October baseball is different and special. By the way, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying, let, right. let can we just watch game three? Mike, Let's just watch. Mike, one, two, three in the lineup. Yeah. Schwarber, Turner, Harper. Ooh. They have 10 home it. runs in eight playoff killing games. It, They're killing it. My man Schwarber. I will never root against Kyle Schwarber, as you know. The ALCS resumes tonight in Arlington, Texas. Max Scherzer, your boy, will be on yeah. the mound for the Rangers after a shoulder strain sidelined him for the last month of the season. Even when healthy, Scherzer's been up and down this season. Tony, do you expect Max Scherzer to be Max Scherzer warrior god tonight? Yeah. I love him. I absolutely love Max Scherzer. And I do expect Scherzer to be Scherzer in this sense. It's either going to be three home runs in the first inning or maybe he'll go five and only allow three or four hits, something like that. He's had these wild swings all year. He had them last year as well. I'm pretty sure the last game he started for Texas, he went five and a third scoreless. But the game before that, which I believe was against Houston, he allowed seven earned runs in three innings. Mike, he's going to be on a pitch count. It's probably going to be about 75. The pitches mount up early with him because he goes for strikeouts and he doesn't want to strike out in three pitches. He wants to be precise and show you what an artist he is. If you ask me the truth, I will tell you, I think he'll go out fairly early, and I think that there will be runs scored. But I'll also say they're doing this, Mike, not for tonight as much as for the World Series. Can he pitch? What if he has to pitch Game 7 in Houston? This is far. a test drive, Mike. This yeah. is a test drive. Tony, I'm only going to disagree with you. As you're the Max Scherzer correspondent on this show. I'm only going to disagree with you <laughs> to this extent. Pitch count? Huh? Max Scherzer's got night. There's no reason for him to look ahead, ahead, ahead. He's not trying to avoid Tommy John. He's Max Scherzer. If he's on and there's a 50-50 chance he'll be on and spectacular and give up nothing, leave him yeah. out there until his arm literally falls off because that you know is what it would take because he is such a gamer to get him out of there. 
if he's on, you let Max Scherzer stay out there until he tells you, Skip, come get me. What are you holding yeah. him back for? Pitch count? He's not some 24-year-old who could only make eight starts a year and do it every seven days. And that ain't Max yeah. Scherzer. Yeah, you're holding him out because you'd like to have him in the World Series. Yeah, but if Bruce Bochy one. sends out a pitching coach, it's because he's afraid to go yank Scherzer himself. He should be. Let's move to James Harden, who is AWOL at the moment. Mm. He wasn't at the 76ers practice today. Hasn't been around the team since Sunday. Harden is said to be in Houston, and he is said to be frustrated at the lack of progress to trade him to the Clippers. Yes, he specifically wants to go to the Clippers. Wilbon, where does this go from here? Nobody who's been around or near the league, certainly not in it, for the last 15 years is surprised to hear that James Harden's in Houston. No, no, nobody's surprised to hear that. Tony, I, I've been saying since the summer, the Philadelphia 76ers have to trade James Harden, period. You can't have him there. Now, here's what Daryl Morey could be doing by being patient. And, and, and Daryl, unlike a lot of GMs, often waits things out. And, and, and I'm not going to say he gets lucky. I'm going to say he waits it out and he gets it right. But here's why you will wait it out, perhaps. Because a team that is figuring to be a contender could have an injury early on or just get off to a bad start. And they could say there's about 12 of those teams out west. They all think they're going to be contenders. And they could get off to a bad start and say, my God, we got to do something. We got to shake it up. And they could overpay for James Harden. And Maury could be on the, on the benefiting end of that. But you got to trade him, Tony. You can't have him. Yeah. You... They, the Philadelphia players know he quit on them. He quit on them in game six and seven. They can say whatever they want to say about practice and him being there and him being a good soldier. No, you, if you're Philly, have to ship James Harden's butt out of town soon. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I mean, I agree they have to make a trade. I'm sure this happens in other sports and other leagues, but it seems to happen in the NBA more that players not only demand to be traded, but they tell you this is exactly where I want to be traded, like it's some sort of game show. We saw this with Damian Lillard a week and a half, two weeks ago. He said he wanted to leave Portland and go to Miami. Now, when he was traded to Milwaukee, he seems perfectly happy. He does. I, I understand why Harden wants to go to the Clippers. He wants to play with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And if that happens, Mike, I got to read you this list. James Harden will be the all-time leader for great players to play with without ever having won a championship ring. Because he has played with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook and Carmelo Anthony and Joel Embiid, and now it'll be Leonard and George. What does that say about Harden? It says he's the cooler. He's the cooler. <laughs> no, not them. Tony, listen. Harden is just an example of a guy, yes, you can say, you can say the modern NBA and it's just passed Harden by. He can still light you up. We saw those 40-plus point yes, games talented. in the playoffs. And then he goes out there and he has, he has nothing. He had nothing when it mattered. He had nothing in pro sports when it mattered. When you have to help your team win, you're up 3-2 in a series, and you got a home game, and you quit on your team, and that's what the players around there believe he did. They believe he quit, and I trust in what they say. So you got it. Harden, what are you doing? You have to get him gone. The problem, Tony, is teams don't want him anymore. If you got young players on your team, you don't want Harden. And Harden wants money. Who is going to give Harden two or three years, multiple years, at $40 million per? Why would you do that? It's a problem. Let's take a break. Coming up, Bryce Young has had a rough rookie season. So did Troy Aikman. So we'll ask Troy how he made it through that experience. Hey, that was rough. I think Troy was open. We'll also ask him whether Micah Parsons remind him of someone he once faced by the name of Taylor. Let's dig into some NFL questions with ESPN Monday Night Football analyst and Hall of Fame quarterback Troy Aikman. I'm going to read this one because it's long. Like you, Bryce Young was the number one overall pick in the draft. And like your Cowboys, his Panthers have been winless through their first six games. Your Cowboys, hate to bring up bad memories, finished 1-15 in, in your rookie year. Obviously, that all changed. But for Young's benefit, how did you get through that? How tough was that? 
Uh, well, Tony, I, I, I'd say with a lot of help from uh, ice bags uh, because of the way <laughs> I got beat up during that year. And I'm sure Bryce Young is feeling a lot of that as well. I was 0-11 as the starter. I didn't even win the one game that we won that year. I date myself a little bit, but I had a quarterback coach, uh, Jerry Rome, who was instrumental, quite honestly, and he just refused to let me lose my confidence. And, and that really is the key. I'm asked a lot, should young players play right away? And I think the only way you really learn is by playing, but you have to guard against losing your confidence. And fortunately, I, I, I did not, even though I had every reason to do that. But this this is a tough year, of course, for Bryce. And you know, we're so quick to judge these quarterbacks on whether or not they're franchise quarterbacks uh, after just a few games, and I hope that everyone's patient with him. Troy, you call the Monday night game in which, of course, the Cowboys beat the Chargers, and at the end of that game, there were two plays. This is going to sound like blasphemy from somebody who's old enough to know better, but I'm going to bring up the name Lawrence Taylor because Micah Parsons, to me, on those two plays, won a sack one where he forces the ball out in the interception. It looked like Lawrence Taylor to me. Is, am I being insane? Is my memory going? You played against the great Lawrence Taylor. What, what do you see when you see Parsons? No, I, I think it's the highest compliment, Michael, that you can give to Lawrence Taylor when you compare anybody to him because he is so universally regarded as maybe the greatest football player defensively that's ever played. And, you know, I think the comparisons, however, are – are fair in the sense that they're both so disruptive and you have to game plan for those guys. The, the difference with Lawrence Taylor was he was such a unique player at that moment in time. No one had ever really seen a player like that. And then Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick, they were able to utilize those abilities. And we've seen other players since then with similar skills, but Micah Parsons is unique. And he also, he, he, when he's on the field, he is the fastest guy on the field, which is incredible. The guy's a 4-3-40 guy, and he could play literally any position almost and be really, really effective with it. So he's got a long way to go before he even makes it into the Hall of Fame. Uh, but I think that when they do compare him to Lawrence Taylor, it's the highest praise you can pay to him. And, and I think that the type of style that they play, I think it warrants that. He's just breathtaking to watch. The Eagles, as I segue, are coming off their first loss and six of their next seven games are against the Dolphins, Cowboys, twice, Chiefs, Bills, Niners. Man, if you were the quarterback of the Eagles looking at that schedule, what would you be saying publicly and perhaps thinking privately? Well, I think publicly you 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 give the coach speak and, and you say we're taking them one game at a time. But I, I think privately... <laughs> I think it's a great opportunity for Philadelphia. When when you look at it, those six games that you talk about that are really tough games when you break down their schedule, four of those are at home, uh, including the first matchup against Dallas and then also San Francisco. And that's really important because it looks like it's a, a three-team race in the NFC for an opportunity to you know, really kind of create some distance and, and at least give yourself some head-to-head -head advantages uh, when you get into the postseason. So I, I view it as a real great opportunity for Philadelphia, even though it is a it is a gauntlet of a stretch. But then it, it softens over the last month, which is also, I think, really good, too, for them a chance to get rested up a little bit, depending on where they're at, and get healed up uh, and be playing some of their best football heading into the postseason. All right, Troy, we will get you out of here on this. It's very hard to go through the day on this show without talking about Aaron Rodgers, so I'll bring up Aaron Rodgers. He seems to be advancing his recovery time. You know, he's a future Hall of Famer. If a future Hall of Famer, like Rodgers says, I'm ready to play, should the team say, okay, you make that call? Yes. The answer to that is yes. I, I, th I think Aaron's been calling a lot of the shots probably there in New York, going back to when he was brought in or maybe even before he was brought in with some of the players that were acquired. But I, it doesn't take a, a football expert to watch the Jets and say that if Aaron Rodgers can play, whatever percentage of that he is reaching to his ultimate health, uh, it, 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 it's probably an upgrade. And I think just with his IQ and what he's able to do for that football team, uh, if, 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 he, if I were... If I were the coach or if I were involved in that organization, as soon as Aaron Rodgers said he could throw a football, he'd be lining up at center.
And I did see him throwing the football the other night, so maybe he's ready to play now. <laughs> Be amazing. Thank you so much, Troy. Troy thank as you. Always. Appreciate thank you. it. You got it. This week, Troy will be in Minnesota for the Niners and Vikings. Let's take one last break. So to come, Gio Reyna does something he hasn't done in more than two years. And tonight, will the Liberty push the Aces to a deciding game five? They're going to play game four in that library in Brooklyn, Tony. You know that, right? Yeah. Dark, well, quiet. Yeah, that's your account. Dark and that's quiet. That's your account. You yeah. watch it. She has presented. Happy 67th birthday, Martina Navratilova. Navratilova was already an accomplished tennis player when she defected from Czechoslovakia to the United States in 1975, seeking political asylum. She became a great player after that. She won 18 majors, including nine Wimbledons and four U.S. Opens. Very smart, very outspoken, and she became the great rival to Chris Evert. They played 80 matches. Navratilova won 43. They played in 60 finals. Navratilova wow. won 36. Wow. They played in 14 major finals, and Navratilova won 10, and then they became best friends. Their friendship and their fights against cancer are the subject of a fabulous piece in the Washington Post by Sally Jenkins. You should read it. Tony, if there's anybody I would consider as the GOAT that's not Serena Williams, it wouldn't be Margaret Court, it wouldn't be Steffi Graf, it's Martina Navratilova. And I know it's hard, almost impossible, to separate Martina and Chris. I, I get that, because I lived my life loving tennis and loving the both of them and watching them. But I, I would say Martina. If it's not Serena, it's Martina. Those there, that's how I got to figure out the goat between those two. Happy anniversary, Tom Brady. On this day, 14 years ago, Brady threw an NFL record five touchdown passes in one quarter in snowy Foxborough as New England buried Tennessee, 59 love. In a span of less than 10 minutes in the second quarter, Brady connected with Randy Moss, on back-to-back -back touchdowns, then with Kevin Falk, and then twice with Wes Welker. Brady ended up with six touchdown passes as he threw a third one to Moss in New England's first drive of the third quarter before Brian Hoyer came on in relief. Just as a footnote, Mac Jones has five touchdown passes so far this season. Oh, one more footnote, Bill Belichick 26 and 30 since Brady left. One more footnote, a weather footnote. That snow was out there in the middle of October? It's an anniversary, and that that's it was there was that much snow on the field in October. What's going on? It must be global warming. It's Boston gets cold yeah. early. Happy trails to more than two years without scoring a Team USA goal for Gio Reyna. The soap opera between the Reyna family and United States men's national team coach Greg Berhalter was on pause long enough for 20 year old Gio Reyna to score two goals last night in Nashville in a 4 0 rout of Ghana. Reyna scored the first and last goals, his first USMNT goals since 2021. After the game, Burhalter spoke glowingly of Reyna. Reyna didn't speak at all. Reyna has never publicly spoken about his relationship with Burhalter. In other soccer news, Lionel Messi scored two first-half goals to lead Argentina to a 2-0 victory over Peru in World Cup qualifying. It feels like Messi has scored 100 goals lately, and still Inter-Miami did not make the MLS playoffs. What happened? Do we think this Reyna Burhalter thing is over now? I mean, do we think that this puts it to bed? Or is there just going to be more stuff, more leaks, more sources? Huh? I think there's more to it. One omission, the PTI research team has discovered that Lawrence Taylor sacked Troy Aikman three times, Ooh. including the 142nd and final sack of his career. we got to go quick to Let's the big finish. Let's do it. Good. Colts quarterback Anthony Richardson will have shoulder surgery. He's officially out for the season. Your thoughts? Young and talented and hate to see him missing his rookie season like this. The NFL extended Roger Goodell's deal three years through March of 2027. That makes sense? Ratings are up. Profits are up. Sure. Adam Silver says the league is considering going back to East versus West at the All-Star game. You on board with that? Stop wasting my time. Get the International versus U.S. game on and stop the other junk. It's a waste of time. Colorado's Kale McCarr is the fastest defenseman in NHL history to 250 points. Are you impressed? Yeah, sure. In games, the fastest ever. Sure. Last one, will the Liberty push the Aces to a game five tonight? I think so, Tony. I think they. I think the Liberty win that game in the dark and quiet of that Brooklyn library. I think so. Game five. Be fun can, to you, see. can you take out books there if it's a library? Real We're quiet. Out of time. Real quiet and Try dark. to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knucklehead. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or 
Apple Podcasts. And now, to the Sports Center. PTI.